arrived on the USA soil. I am here, in the land of dreams and opportunities. I am hopeful. Still, I miss my home. I do not recognize the continent they are talking about on the media, on the discussions. Is it the same Africa I know? I have not been everywhere on my continent, but still, I am wondering, are my memories wrong? Is my continent darker than night without a shimmer of light? Are we really defined by the words war, famine, and poverty? I wonder, I wonder, and then I get to meet folk like me, who have been here for a while, or always, as soon as we meet African style, eh? I rediscover the one I know, you know, the one never seen on the media, on the pictures, the one never talked about, the laughter, the music, the courage, the potential, the achievements. I remember my home, my land, my country, and my continent, and I want to share it because it is so much more than what the media claims it to be. The land I am from has ups and downs, poverty and treasures, the strong and the weak, the joy and the tears, the dancing and the mourning, the unity and the divide, the Africa we know, the one we call Mama Africa. We want to share her with you the motherland, cradle of humanity, the one who watched me grow and through thick and thin made me into who I am today. Let's go down memory lane. Join our journey. Look beyond what you see, beyond what is shown. The Africa we know smiles, the Africa we know works and learns. The Africa we know is diverse. Whenever I'm around my friends, we always laugh and talk about stories and our parents because those stories make us happy. Let me get a little taste. Um, no. Cliff, come on. Hey, 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 hey. I said no. Listen. I wasn't born last night. You can't taste my jello fries. You said you want a little bite. If I let you, you eat everything inside. So go that way and fix your own plate. Cause friends ain't loyal. If you invite them, they'll eat everything for you. So I won't share, and there's nothing you can say that I will hear. And I don't care, you think I mean well, life ain't fair. It wasn't prepared for you. So why do you think I'm going to share it with you? No, did your love's not for you? Oh no. Not for you. Hi, it's me, Clifford the Wusu. You might have seen me all over social media dancing to popular African music or making jokes about being African. But one thing I don't joke with and one thing people realize about me is the fact that I love being African and I love Africa. Africa has so much value and Africa is rich, but the world perceives Africa as being poor. And that's because media likes to paint Africa black and sad, but Africa is actually bright, colorful, and joyful. Africa is rich in culture, talent, and resources, but the media doesn't focus on that. The media focuses on disease, sadness, and poverty. But those are issues that's happening all over the world, not just in Africa. That's why it's up to us to educate the world, to show the world the brightest side of Africa, the Africa that the media does not want to show.
name is Grace and I'm from Vermont and Congo Brazil. The first word that I think of when I hear the word Africa, I think of music. Well, you see, in Africa we have a lot of dances, a lot of different music, depending on your tribes, depending on the region you come from, and it's so rich. It's so much wealth, and that really inspires me. I love dancing, so every type of African music, and um, that's why when I think of Africa, I first think of music. Like, think about all the major musical forms, like they all find their origins in the African continent. But I'm really interested in Azonto. Now, oh, Ben is a guy. That's a guy named Hey, hey, hey. I love it. You know, but there's so much music, so many musical forms in Africa. We have very nationalistic music. Mm -hmm. We try to mix it in with the African and the Middle Eastern since mm -hmm. we're not really particular in like <laughs> sub Saharan like, right. right. area. And we have this one artist, Muhammad Munir. He's the best. He combines the like Sub-Saharan, all that music with mm -hmm. the Middle Eastern music. It's like a nice cool blend. That's and check them out. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Yeah. Very nice. So Definitely. Cool. I mean, Sinai, I'm pretty sure is the best. Because we have to do that. I like that. Represent. Represent. Oh yeah, the dance is like. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like yes. I can't keep up, but yeah. You can't, yeah. Be, you can't be hungry and then that be oh, no, no. no. <laughs> Just be ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. Salam, my name is Hoden. I'm from Somalia. And the first thing that comes to my mind when I think about Africa is beauty and the diversity that's in the continent. My experiences in Africa has been completely different depending on what country I've been to. In Rwanda, I saw the rolling hills and the beautiful topography that it had. When you go to Somalia, you see the beautiful deserts and the beautiful jungles and the beautiful uh, coastlines and beaches. And it really depends wherever you go in Africa, and that's the beauty of it. It's the second largest continent in the world, and it has so much to offer in terms of culture, in terms of beauty, in terms of geography, in terms of language. Anything that you're looking for, you can find in this continent. Where to go? Talking about North Africa or Sub-Saharan Africa. Of course, the question of, is it safe? Can we go alone? Do you think we'd be fine? And I think it's legitimate to ask the question of safety. But it is only legitimate if you ask it about all travels around the world. We've stayed true in Egypt. We still speak Arabic, even though we've been colonized by the British. We speak Arabic mostly, and then English is our second language. So I like how we keep it still our own language, even though it's a different dialect as mentioned. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In Senegal, like you see a lot of like French bread, which we have like uh -huh. being colonized. Yeah. But then like we'll eat that with like our wool of rice or like the mafe or you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's like kind of you mix the languages with what you were colonized with just like you mix kind of the food exactly after dinner we have tea time like they do in britain <laughs> <laughs> you know it makes no sense to have after a big fishy meal <laughs> right exactly <laughs> my name is soma my name is abdullah kenner and i'm from liberia the first thing that comes to my mind when I think of Africa is resilience. Despite all these difficulties and challenges, Africans continue to be hardworking and determined. My name is Ayak and I'm from Nigeria. When I hear the word Africa, the first thing I think of is home. And I think of home because 
every place that I go to, whether it's a family friend, a cousin, or just somebody that we're from the same general area, I feel very comfortable. I feel very safe. I feel like my secrets are going to be kept there. I feel like that's a place that I can be happy and feel comfortable. Good day. My name is Jesse, and I am from the Republic of the Congo. The first word that comes to my mind when I hear about Africa is hope. Because no matter what, we are still hopeful for a better future, a better life, and a better Africa. So that's why we come to school and study, and that's why we innovate and we have ideas, and that's why we are doing this documentary, because we are hopeful. And so the first word I hear is hope. Marhalan, my name is Nana, and I'm from Egypt. The first thing that comes to my mind when I hear the word Africa is history. We have so much history in the continent, starting from my country, the Great Pyramids of Giza, and the civilizations that thrive. And with that comes so much culture and bountiful information that we have offered to the rest of the world. What well, comes to mind when I think about Africa is humanity. I think that to be human is to be African. Uh, there's a reason, a simple reason is that uh, for the first five million of the six years, six million years that humanity has been around, people lived only in Africa. And if I try as we might to run away from Africa, I think that we are all African in the end because the first human beings uh, were evolved in Africa and this has been shown through paleoanthropological studies. I think that uh, paleontologists and paleoanthropologists have looked everywhere for evidence of the earliest uh, evidence for humankind, but they have always returned to Africa. The idea of Mother Eve uh, as an African mother has always been there, has been proven by science, and so whenever I think of Africa, I think of what it means to be human. And what it means to be human is really to be African. Yeah, my, my experience working in Africa about specifically this uh, question of corruption is that I think there is a misconception, you know, when talking about the continent, you know, corruption level. Uh, we have clients who uh, get loans from the organization, and I can tell you that African entrepreneurs, they are trustworthy. I can tell you today that we have over 95% of repayment rate. Uh, which most banks, I believe even here in the United States, don't, 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 don't have. So basically, yes, corruption is there in some ways, but when it comes to the population, to the entrepreneur, to the business sector, I really don't buy that idea that because of corruption it's, it's difficult to invest in Africa. But I look at it differently because I see Africa, of course, as an emerging continent where you have uh, a very high return on investment. So basically, that's a very good reason why people should, you know, consider Africa as as really the next frontier where they should invest their their, their money. I would I would also say that one of the resources that is often undervalued when it comes to Africa has to do with women. Um, the African continent, and particularly when you look at the level of entrepreneurship that women display, is quite remarkable. And I do think that there's been tremendous progress made, particularly when it comes to educational access for women. I do think still much more can be done. We still live in knowing communities where when it comes to, if a family has to pick between sending a boy to school or sending a girl to school, our traditions are such that in some, of our, in some parts 
of, of and some parts of our, of our countries and our continent, that there's still very much this perception that girls are dispensable. And that when it comes to access to education, we want our boys to get an education. And there's a saying, and I think it's very much a saying, um, and, and the data shows that as well. When you're able to educate a girl, you're in many ways, and that, and that girl is able to then access resources, you're in many ways educating an entire community, and you're in many ways uplifting a community. And so I do think that's another resource that we have that is not leveraged to the level that it needs to be leveraged. I am cautiously optimistic. The wealth of Africa, besides natural resources, is actually the people. Given the right opportunities, by which I mean education, by which I mean power sharing, opportunities and choices to do useful you know, jobs to really reach, you know, for people to reach their own potential, given these right conditions, that continent could be a powerhouse because there is everything when you think about it there is all the wealth and we ask the question why is that wealth not evenly distributed why is that wealth not going where it should go which is in the education of people in the empowerment of people in making the continent a better place but there are We've been looking just at the negative side, what is not working. We've been looking at disasters, at you know, man-made as well as natural disasters. We are looking at deficiencies, and that's how we are trained, you know, uh, by the media to look at just what is dysfunctional. If we were to ask the media to do a bit more portrayal of the positive, then that would give us uh, reason to hope. And what is positive is that where Africa is today. I'm talking, for example, about the North Africa that I can speak about with authority, where it is today in terms of accomplishments, in terms of health, education, in terms of housing, in terms of even democratic experiment. Where we are today is lights away, centuries away from where we were just 40 years ago. The problem in assessing Africa is that, A, we forget history. Suddenly, we become amnesiac. And suddenly, we think colonialism is the past. And the ravages of colonialism is, is the past, right? And suddenly, we become impatient. We want all of the things to be done and right now. And that is an impossibility, given how the global system is structuring our experiences. <laughs> but one of the other misconceptions also is arranged marriages. Mm -hmm. I know there's, there are still um, regions and places in Africa where it is done, mm -hmm. but it's not part of our culture anymore. Like, yeah, our parents it's the same for me. Like, not really part. Of, like, I mean, like, like my, my, my parents, like, you know, like they have, like they have some suggestions, like, like matchmaking. Yeah, 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 but, but they like, don't. Like, they're not uh, Yeah. yeah. Guinea has a lot of arranged, and that's why you yeah. see the 14 year olds and the 15 yeah. year olds yeah. getting married. Yeah, that's true. I actually have, I mean, it's a personal story, but that's true. Like, I cannot testify to yeah. that it happens a lot. Yeah, exactly. Um, in Somalia, which is, a, it's also a Muslim country, and you have the more developed areas and areas that are very rural um, where they have arranged marriages and they have dowry and things like mm -hmm. that. But then like, well, coming from the diaspora specifically, or even when you go to, like, um, Somaliland, like Hargeisa or Mogadishu, you have, um, like, matchmaking, and you also have, like, um, just, like, people dating and getting to know each other, and just, like, having, yeah. like, a mixed group of friends where, like, usually they end up marrying, like, one of their closest friends. And it's just, it's very, it's, um, it's not, like, a stereotypical, like, Muslim culture. I mean, but then again, like, Muslim culture is so diverse. I mean, obviously, like, we don't, people wait until like they're married and stuff like that and a lot of people are conservative but like there's still mingling going on there's still like friendships like co-ed friendships and stuff like that. Guinea yeah. is definitely changing there's mm -hmm. definitely a lot more people who are trying to rail against you know the the standards of the of their grandparents and their yeah. parents mm -hmm. who are trying to put major pressures on them but it is definitely changing especially in the more uh, urban areas there's a lot of you know, contemporary thinking, especially for our generation. Our generation is like, no, 
Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, that's true. I, I think in Gabon too, it's, it's quite close to Congo. Yeah, I mean, we're very... Very! <laughs> we, like, we don't care anymore. We're yeah. very well. Africa has a wealth of natural resources and there's no secret that the you know the, the natural resources is something that is attractive to other parts of the world whether you're talking about the West or whether you're talking about China um, you know we have a wealth of resources when it comes to natural resources same I would say really a major resource for Africa is, is its human resources um, you know Africans are the most mobile of any groups of people in the world um, the fact that there's a lot of movement between and across borders and the resources that then comes from there, I think, is tremendous for Africa. It offers Africa tremendous opportunity. The same way that it's no secret that, you know, when you look at, you know, the data about, you know, uh, for example, immigrants in the United States. Among immigrants in the United States, Africans are among the most educated of immigrants in the United States. That also speaks to the, the, the value of the resources and the human resources that Africa has. So I would say resource-wise, we have natural resources. We have also mainly human resources. And most of the talks about African resources have always been about oil, gas, and mining opportunities, uh, but very less about its human capital. I believe uh, Africa has a huge potential in terms of its human capital. In fact, today, 65% uh, of the African population is below 35 years. So this is not only a huge labor force, but also a massive consumer base. So uh, entrepreneurs and investors, when they look at Africa, they have to look at this human capital as, as uh, one of the resources that the continent has. Um, it's no secret that you have major corporate corporations that are out in Africa, whether it's looking at you know uh, minerals, whether it's looking at oil, whether it's looking at gold, you name it, Africa has that. This is really a, a diverse continent when it comes to resources, and the world is already benefiting from it. Whether it's to help you know China with this current you know, thirst for you know raw materials. Africa is the land that many are going to for raw materials. And so the world is already benefiting tremendously, I think, from Africa. What is not recognized is the level of benefit that it has been able to provide to the world at the detriment of Africans themselves. That, I think, is the real problem in most cases. Yes, the best way to, uh, to help Africa, I believe, is to close the chapter of charity and encourage the language of entrepreneurship and impact investing. And I always tell the people, uh, some other entrepreneurs that I know, that uh, today we have to make sure that uh, the development in Africa is basically African made, is made in Africa, not made in China or made in the West. This is a way basically to encourage the African wherever they are in the outside of the continent or inside the continent, basically to engage themselves, to invest in Africa, not only asking for foreign investors to come to Africa, but we have to take that first step, invest ourselves, I mean invest our resources in Africa so that others would follow, but we have to take that first step and encourage others afterward. So I would say one of the best, the best ways we could move forward is to first really help people shift paradigm and understand that the solutions for Africa are not outside of Africa, it is within Africa. And that furthermore, given our human resources, given the fact that we have intellectuals all around the world, we could probably better leverage those intellectual resources as opposed to having them continue to in many ways be depleted because of the exodus and the out-migration that happens in Africa. So I would say first and foremost, Good governance is very important. People need to feel confident in their government. They need to feel confident that the political climate is stable enough so that they too can come back and figure out ways to reinvest in communities, to reinvest in businesses, to reinvest in many ways our social structures. So that would be probably one of the most important things that we could do. Then I would say once we are able to create that stability and good governance, then we really need to create and open up the space for as much entrepreneurship as possible. Many economies that have grown have grown because of entrepreneurship. 
and Africans are very entrepreneurial. We have some of the most robust informal sector, and I think that informal sector, if provided enough support and resources, I think we can do so much more in terms of being able to leverage that. So I think creating the climate and creating the space for entrepreneurship is probably one of the best things we can do. Also, I would say a major part of the potential is in education. I think for those who have been given a good education, they're able to give back, even from a distance. I think the African diaspora contribute tremendously back to Africa. It's no secret that without remittances, many of our governments, frankly, and our countries will probably collapse. Um, so the fact that I think the diaspora is very much connected to Africa offers us, I think, a unique opportunity to be able to do some good. While being outside of the continent, there is still a way that we can contribute. There is still a way that we can participate in building the, uh, the African continent. And one example I can give here is, for example, now we are having uh, a lot of uh, investment funds that are being built in the African community, in the African diaspora, where basically, while being in the United States, you can invest in those uh, investment funds that will uh, channel this investment on the African continent without you necessarily having to be, uh, to be uh, in, in Africa. And among the African diaspora, we also have many entrepreneurs who basically are moving back to Africa to implement some small, medium-sized businesses. I think we should reach a point where we, we can work together. It's not everybody who have this entrepreneur, entrepreneurial skills. So let us support those of us who have these entrepreneurial skills, give them resources so that they can, they can invest them in the, uh, in the continent. And we can basically all benefit from, from, from that. People don't, and again, the media tends to feed itself on stories that you know, can sell. And unfortunately, there's not right now the space for good stories from Africa to sell. But the way we can turn that around is for Africa to own more media space. And for us to make sure that we push our stories forward, to make sure that we continue to tell the story that is the dominant narrative of not the negative, but the dominant narrative of what we know to be true of what the continent is about. So I do think that there's a lot of that that's going on. You have a lot of folks who are involved in movies, in cinema, who are involved in documentaries that I think are beginning to make sure that Africa has its rightful place. And so I'm very encouraged by that. That would be one of the, the ways that I think we can go about that. Misconceptions about Africa. Um, whenever I lived there, I was always being asked, is it really hot over there? Do you live in like the middle of the jungle? Is it I don't know, rainforest? It's just really hot. And where I lived was actually up in the mountains. I was about five thousand feet, and it got down to the forties, like forty degrees sometimes. Like it was never going to snow, but it was cold. So like, what what are the questions that you guys been asked that just are completely out of left field? Okay, I can relate to this one. I've been asked if I live in a hut or a pyramid since I come from Egypt. <laughs> We are modernized. We live in like regular houses. We have cars and automobiles. I don't understand where the hut idea came from. <laughs> <laughs> is there a <laughs> plane in the pyramid? <laughs> Sometimes on occasion, you know. <laughs> so out of left field. <laughs> I've had that question like, uh, you speak good English for an African. I mean, we do have schools. <laughs> I do go to the yeah, university. Yeah. And we do read books and, you know, so. And, and also, like, you know, like, in most African countries, like the official language is either French, Arabic, or uh, English. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just taught in school since primary school, and yeah. we speak it at yeah. home, and you yeah. know. Yeah. Well, speaking of languages, I mean, have you guys heard of that language called African? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty, African. It's pretty now, isn't it? Yeah. You guys speak African, and it's, it's, it's different from <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've gotten that question. Like, mm, people, whenever I would go back, would be like, oh, so are you going to go see, like, the lions and the gorillas? <laughs> and, like, the direct Can you, like, take a picture with one for me? Because, like, oh my God. like, they're just walking around in the street. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> they live in a <laughs> yeah. they say, like, it's a 
compliment like, yeah, I really wanted to go to Africa because I like I like safari and I just I'm really <laughs> wow. into that kind of stuff. I'm like, that's it's a continent. Like <laughs> yeah. there's yeah. some, but they're not like just chilling in the street. Spanning latitudes, spanning longitude, you know, it's like there's a lot of different ecosystems. It's not all lion territory. No, exactly. Exactly. No. The first time I saw a lion was in Ghana in the zoo. Yeah, and that's the thing about Africa. It's so diverse. I know a question I get a lot is, "Oh, you don't look African. Like Africans look like you. Oh, yeah, you have curly hair. Like, why do you dress like that? Why do you speak a different language? It's like yeah. it's fifty-four different countries, and within each country, there's so much ethnic diversity right. and mm -hmm. so many different languages, so many different, you know." Um, different looks that comprise exactly. the time. Okay, all right. I know that Africans are very dramatic. And if you didn't know, I'm telling you, Africans are very, very dramatic. We like to stretch things out. We like to take the smallest things and make it big things. For example, if your mom comes home and she told you to sweep and you didn't sweep, she would turn this simple thing into the biggest thing. All of a sudden, hey, okay, so you have a sweep and I told you to sweep, right? Okay. Okay, don't listen to me, okay? Kill me in this house. Murder me. Murder me. You see, how does something so small that has to do with sweeping turn into murder. That's just who we are. Because we are so dramatic, it goes into our movies. African movies are very, very dramatic, okay? Some of the scenes drag on for way too long, okay? For example, in an American movie, when somebody gets shot five times, pew, 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 they die right away, okay? You know what? It's better for me to show you. Check this out. What I like about American movies, they go straight to the point, okay? They usually say something like, real dramatic, and then they shoot, okay? And they shoot their big guns, so they'd be like, oh, okay, so you thought it was a game, huh? You thought it was a game to play with my money. Pew, pew, pew. Now that makes sense to all of us. The guy got shot, pew, and he died right away, instant. It was a bullet going inside his body. He's dead, that's it. There's, there's nothing more to discuss. There's nothing to drag on. You got shot, pew, you're dead. But in the African movie, it usually doesn't go down like that. It usually goes down like this. Hey, my friend, I told you that today, if you come here, you must have my money. Eh? Where is my money? Eh? Oh, you don't have it? <laughs> okay. Pew, pew, pew. And they add the most dramatic sound effects. Sound effects that don't even go with the movie. Like all of a sudden you hear thunder. Why? You hear alien sounds. Why? So you, you are killing me because of money. I can't die today. I can't die today. Oh, 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 oh. Because of money. Go, 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 The end you have killed me today, but tomorrow I will also kill you. Mark the war, tomorrow I will also kill you. 
I am dying. This is farewell. All because of m m m m m money. Thank <laughs> you.